you want to put a spacer here, whatever it could be, cardboard, electric, doesn't matter. It keeps your nose bolt from getting scuffed when you take off the top and bottom cow because this will free float. And you'll just take off the forward and the aft bolts. Don't worry about the, the cow doors. You want to remove the cam locks and then get yourself some cups and label them front and back because these are shorter and longer bolts and you want to make sure you put those in the same spot when you put it back on. Up, there's going to be a tab that goes in between the firewall and the flare shield that you'll just have to slide out carefully. Okay, now I'll move to the bottom calcium. <clears throat> if your aircraft's a 200, you're going to have a cow flat door that's going to have to come off first. And that'll just be a 3 8 And same thing as the top, longer screws in front, shorter screws in the back, and keep those in their separate cups. You want to leave the counter sinks in on the top until you're ready to take it off fully. There's your take off. One in the back, and one in the front. Especially if you're doing this by yourself, it helps better if you have two people. So your oil spout on the 200s are going to be forward, 180s are going to be aft, and the 180s will typically already have your hose on there ready for you to drain. So any hose that you can get to fit around the nipple on this that'll secure itself will work. And the way that this goes up is just like any of your fuel drain spouts on the outside of your panels. It's a push up and turn clockwise, and it'll hold it. And then your oil will drain, and it does help if your plane is warm. Um, maybe a small run up just to get your oil flowing. When it's hotter, it'll drain faster. So you have a safety wire at the very bottom. It's the only one you can really see and access. You'll have to cut the safety wire first. And the oil filter takes a one inch socket. You probably need a bigger wrench because these are on there pretty tight. Get it close to loose. And you want to take rags, tuck them underneath the oil filter and around the oil filter adapter itself. When you pull this off, it will want to leak oil everywhere. And then finish taking it off. And tip it up as fast as you can once you get it off. You just want to take your rags out of there carefully, wipe around your oil filter. Make sure your rags are clean so you don't get any debris, any dirt in your housing. And then after you get all that done, just take a glove or whatever else you have that can go around the oil filter housing and just cover it up until you get the new one on. So you take your oil filter cutter, it goes right in the hole, and it's reverse thread. You give it just a couple turns till it feels tight, and spin it a couple times, and just keep giving it a little bit of a twist every couple passes.
and go ahead and back it off. All this stuff can come off. You want to pull it, drain that screen, the spring can go. And then as you pour, you want to look in it, pour slowly and check for any debris that may be sitting in the bottom of the bowl. And if you're good, then you can just toss the, all these other pieces. And I'm gonna let that drain for a minute. So by the time your oil, after you let your oil filter drain a little bit, it should look all like that, all your internal stuff's out. And then you'll have this metal tab that comes down the middle that separates the two ends of these that meet. You want to get yourself a pretty sh decently sharp knife. And you want to start making your way down through the filter. And then you'll do the same on the other side. You just want to make sure you bottom out the blade so you know for sure that this stuff's going to peel off. And then down that metal piece, you want to cut lengthwise. And you can start the process of peeling this open and trying to keep it all intact. So after you have it out, this will be your inside that you just rolled off. You want to flip it over because this will be where all the contaminants will stick. And you just want to spread it open, run it underneath of a light, check for anything metallic, any, any contaminants before you put on your new oil filter. And if something does look like metal, you want to take a magnet and make sure that it's not magnetic. Okay, oil filter is pretty self-explanatory. You want to put today's date, whatever date you change the oil. And then your tack time. And then just your tail number. Okay. There may still be oil built up at the bottom, so just like I said, I'm gonna give it a quick wipe. And you want to take some, some DC4 or some kind of uh, O ring lubricant and just generously wipe it around the O ring and that. And these oil filters are torched between 16 and 18 foot pounds, and it does indicate it on the oil filter if you do forget. Take a decent length of safety wire. You have two sets of loops on the very bottom of the housing. I always prefer to go to this one. 
pull it through till you got about even strands. You want to kind of pinch it on there so it kind of holds tight. You know, pull it up to your first hole. And if you have safety wire pliers, it's about eight holes. And get that twist as close as that hole as you can. Make sure this other wire stays underneath. And then you'll want to twist this one counterclockwise the other direction that holds that wire underneath. And give it a little bit more twist than and then get that last little whip. Cut about enough to where you leave almost an inch. And always twist into the curl, not away from it, or else your wire will unthread. And you'll just want to put the date of when you changed it on top, if it's not already on top. just so if anybody opens this up, they can see right off the bat. So you wanna take your Clicos, if you have any. Same way we'll work with the screws. I preferably like to do the middle first. Cow door down. Hit the middle. And the forward. In the aft, then you can take the middle one back out. And just click all four of these counter seam holes. And what'll help if your holes don't line up is you'll get a screwdriver or anything that's just a pick to line your holes up. Like I said, if they're not already. You set one right there. And one on the bottom. and then just work your way up. Okay. Line your holes up. And as before, longer screws go in front. And always start from the middle out to get the waves out of the cowling. Like this wave right here. Go 
Same thing with these screws that are countersunk. Longer ones in front, shorter ones in back. So your cow flap door will go up to your pulley here and it doesn't matter which side this pin goes in and there's two holes you'll go in the top one so you'll get proper in and out and this pin just goes through there and just clips on like that and for your stabilizer arms they will always be outside and your bolt will always face inward. Washer the nut. Same with the other side. So any spout will work. You can cut an oil, oil jug and use it. And you'll put seven in. Sometimes it calls for eight, but only do seven. in between this fairing here and the firewall housing. Line it up. I'm gonna drop this over your way. You can close that door. Same thing on this side. And then you wanna hit your cam locks on the outside first. And this ensures that these are going to close before you screw it down, because if you screw it down, it could be too far over or too far under. And now you're ready to screw them down. Again, up top, shorter screws in the back, longer in the front. Your pick if you need it. Same thing that I showed you on the front. You want to work your way from middle to out to get rid of this. Same thing up top. And then don't forget your sleeves and then you're done.